Here is a collection of hi-fi components that I have acquired over the past months out of various sources. None of these have been tested yet, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. Simple rule, even in case of problems, the top covers stay in place. And that way, I'm not taking away anything from possible future repair videos. In a way, this is also a preview of things that might come in the near future. Here is a Technics RST230 dual cassette deck. This seems to be a bit of a higher-ended model because it has Dolby B and C noise reduction and all electronic push buttons. Let's see what this one does. Okay, fast forward works. Uh, and then it didn't work anymore. Hmm, that's strange. Let's try rewind. No. Nope. Cassette has not reached the end. Oh, that's odd. Let's try playback. Oh, I, I think I can hear suspicious noises from the cassette compartment. Let's wind the cassette back a little bit and see if it crumbled up the tape. No, it doesn't seem like it. Seems fine. Ah, that's what I was hearing. Strange clicking noises. Hmm. Okay, let's try the other deck. Okay, fast forward works. Question is for how long will it work? Rewind works. That's all quite happy. And... Yep, there is playback. Okay, so the playback deck works fine. Here is a JVC XLV152 CD player. I found this at the side of the road. It was covered in mud, most of which I have already cleaned off. It does have this original sticker, the JVC Plus. Well, it would certainly be a plus if this worked, but given the condition that I found this in, I'm not too optimistic. Oh, it does power up. It does open up. But will it read a disc? It will! Wow, and it was quick. Okay.
Yep, that seems to work. Here is a Telefunken HC800 cassette deck, and this is a bit of a surprise even before I attempt to power this up, because it has high-com noise reduction. Now, you can tell by the membrane push buttons, this must be a mid-1980s model. That's when those were popular. And I thought Telefunken had dumped the high-com noise reduction system right after their consumer electronics department was taken over by Thomson in 1983. Well, apparently, that's not the case. But let's try to turn this on. Ugh. Well, that doesn't sound nice. We do have a light in the cassette compartment, and let's see. Yep, there is also a light for high com noise reduction. Let's put in a cassette and see what happens. Okay, we do have a rather weak fast forward. I assume we won't have any rewind. No, not enough power to do a rewind. Let's try playback. No, that doesn't work. Ugh. Okay, so no playback, and when the auto stop triggers, there is oscillation. That's not good. Here is a Sony CDP710, and this came with the remote control, which was full of leaky batteries, so it's going to need some cleaning. But let's see what this one does. Ugh. Nasty noise in the speaker. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think there is a bad belt in the drawer mechanism. Can we, uh, let's see, can we help this a little bit? Ha! There we go. I'm hearing a hum in the speakers. Okay, the hum goes away if you move the RCA cable, so maybe there is some bad solder joints on the output jack. Let's put in a CD. And... Oh, no, that doesn't look good. Does not read the CD. Let's try again. Okay, there is this hum again. Yeah, this CD player has something wrong with it. What a shame. Here is an Onkyo TA2051. I'm not very optimistic with this one because I got it from a friend of mine and he said one of the motors is bad. But let's give it a try anyways. Okay. And fast forward works. Rewind works. No bad motors yet. Ah, okay. No playback. No, nope. no playback. Okay, and oh dear. <laughs> it pulled out a bit of a tape. Let's bring that back into the cassette. So this is going to need some work. Here is a rather dirty Philips CD600, which seems to have a disc inside, and it has read the disc. That's good. Okay, there is the disc. And you can see by the design of the drawer, this does have the high-quality CDM4 mechanism, which is good. But that also means it has the soft plastic gear in the loading mechanism. That's not so good. Well, let's put in my test CD. Ugh. 
Okay, reads the disc. And it plays the disc. Ah. Skip buttons are up there. Well, that's a bit of a strange problem. You may have noticed it seems to cut off the very beginning of the songs. But so far, so good. Here is a Pioneer CTS-550S with Dolby S. I have already plugged this in. The standby light is on. Let's turn it on. Oh. Well, standby light goes off, but I can't see any signs of life. Huh. Okay, well, that's a sign of life. Is the display broken? Oh, oh, wow. Th this is the dimmest vacuum fluorescent display I've ever seen. That is so faint. Wow. Oh, there is... <laughs> no. Well, it, 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 it does have a display off button, but... That doesn't do anything. That's very odd. So, this has some sort of a problem with a vacuum fluorescent display. Well, let's see if we can make this work otherwisely. Well, that's helpful. Ha! Got you. Okay. Well, it's running slow, but it does run. It's running very slow. Fast forward. Works. Rewind works. Playback works. It works, but it's slow. Oh, now it stays open. Well, that's nice. Okay, let's put in a cassette to record. Well, this is going to be difficult, because I can't see what the display is doing. Well, let's press record. Okay. We do get a signal loop through. Ha! Yeah, this is a three-head cassette deck, so we can monitor the recording as we're making it. Well, that doesn't sound very convincing. Let's see, do the heads need to be cleaned? Stays open. I really don't think the heads need to be cleaned, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to get that potential source of a problem out of the way. But the heads do look clean. Yeah. That cotton swab is relatively clean still. Let's put back the test cassette. No. Uh, 
Yeah. That still sounds just as bad, so... No dirty heads. It is something else. Okay, but I guess this so far is the best working cassette deck out of the bunch. Hmm. Here is a Techniques SLP202A CD player. Not very optimistic. I have had two very similar CD players in the past, none of which worked. But let's give this one a chance. Okay. Oh, it has... Yep, there is a disc inside. And it plays. Let's not play too much of that. Okay, drawer opens. And... Oh, well... This is <laughs> it's the same artist than on the CD we pulled out of the Philips CD player. What a coincidence. Anyway, oh, and this also has the Philips CDM4 mechanism. That's good. Let's put in my test CD. Okay. Yep, I would say that works well. That works very well. And here is a really nice one. This is an Akai GX6, and it comes along with a complimentary cassette. Ugh. Well, that doesn't sound happy. Doesn't like the complimentary cassette, it spits it right out. Let's try my cassette. No. Is it going to close at all? No. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, I have to admit, I have already done some research on the Akai GX6, and this is actually a common problem. There is grease in the pivot points of the pinch roller assemblies. There is two of them. It's a double capstan mechanism. And the grease gets hard and sticky, and then this is one of the symptoms when the pinch rollers can't move anymore. So the diagnosis is simple. The repair, however, will be quite complicated. I'm afraid it's probably going to be one of those repair jobs that I have to do without a camera because it requires a lot of concentration. And last but not least, a little extra. Here is an Onkyo Integra T4450 tuner. Now, I don't find testing tuners particularly exciting, because usually they just work. But Integra was Onkyo's label for their high-end equipment, so I think this one deserves to be on video. Also, I don't have the big roof antenna that I had in the old workshop set up around here yet, so all I have attached to this is a little piece of wire. So let's see how well that works. Okay, so far so good. Um, let's see. There we have automatic tuning. Okay.
Uh, well, the automatic tuning is a little bit too sensitive. It stops in places where it shouldn't stop. And then it stops again. You, you have to push it twice to get it to go. And see, you push it once and it just goes one step. That's annoying. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess that's enough of the tuner. FM works. And I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Testing the AM band here in Germany is pointless because we don't have any more AM stations. But anyway, that is the Onkyo Integra tuner. Seems to be quite sensitive and it does sound good. And that's it. Ten hi-fi components have been tested. A lot of broken equipment this time, but that only means more videos in the future. So, which one of these components do you like best? Which one would you like to see being repaired first? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you for watching.